I simply love racing games, from the classics like OutRun or Ridge Racer to the modern ones like Midnight Club or Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing. From the obvious ones like Need for Speed, but more the earlier titles, Burnout or Test Drive, up to the not so obvious ones like Road Rage 3, R Racing or Shocks. From the kart racer like Crash Team Racing, Bomberman Kart or Pac-Man Rally, up to the simulations like Gran Turismo, Enthusia Professional Racing or simply Formula 1. Heck, even from bikes like Road Rash, SPKX or MX vs ATV Reflex, up to any other kind of vehicle like in Wipeout or Sled Storm. And this was just to name a few, of course, because otherwise I could sit here all day and you don't want that. Heck, you don't even wanna hear me talk about anything, but here we are. And obviously some racing games are better than others. Yes, I am basically open to anything that has to do with racing or just driving. Yeah, so open world games count as well. Driver. LA Rush, or The Fast and Furious, to name a few again. Weird how racing slash driving still isn't my favorite genre, seeing how I went crazy here by naming and showing this many titles, but hey, that's just how it is. But sticking with the classics, there still are developers out there that pay homage to those or simply try to keep the genre alive. Horizon Chase Turbo or 80s Overdrive are just examples of it. And sorry, but since I cannot record PS Vita footage at all, I could only show you the case of Horizon Chase Turbo. And yes, I know that there is a Switch version of it, and I will get it someday, but for now, just enjoy the case. So this time around, somebody decided to go for virtual racing, or rather a game much like it called Formula Retro Racing. And yes, the developer Repixel8 loved virtual racing quite a lot, otherwise I doubt he would have created this game. But who can blame him? Virtual racing is one of the best arcade racers of all time, and still fun to this day. But talking about Formula Retro Racing, if you never played a game like this, then the concept is very simple. Um, pick a car, pick a track and drive to win. It cannot get any simpler than this, but that's easier said than done, of course. This game takes you back to the times where career modes were not the norm, where you just picked up the game and played, over and over and over and over again. So to many people these days, a game like that may be boring, but think about it, essentially you don't do anything different in, for example, Gran Turismo. You race on the same tracks over and over and over again. Sure, Gran Turismo has a bit more depth than that, but that's still essentially what you do. Regardless, I clearly don't need to tell you about the visual simplicity of Formula Retro Racing. Just look at it! Blocks all over the place, especially everything outside the tracks. But ultimately though, that only contributes to the charm of games like these, games that pay homage to the old classics. Sure, modern players today will most likely look at it and go, what the f fuck is all this? But if you grew up in the 90s, like me, and played games like the ones I've mentioned previously from that time, then the nostalgia will always hit you in the face to the point where you cannot pass a game like this up, despite it being digital only. But the same also goes if you are far younger, but still open-minded to games like these. If you look at everything that is going on, you will see blocks all over the place of course, but a decent amount of bright and sharp colors as well. So it certainly is still pleasing to the eye. 
And if you accept the fact that this is a pure arcade racer, then you will have a lot of fun. Well, mostly. While the cars, or rather car, there is only a single one just in different colors, is fast and controls fine, it still can be a beast at times. The major issue comes when you try to avoid other drivers that like to zigzag around for some reason or force themselves into a racing line to the point of shoving you into a wall, which will cause you to fly off to the right and explode. Well, ok, not explode, but uh, get destroyed. It's a bit hard to explain until you have experienced it for yourself. It's not like the car will slide all over the place out of nowhere. Usually, you actually will have a good control of the car, in a predictable manner, but as soon as you have to change directions fast and immediately have to counter steer, then it feels like the car will lose all its stability for no reason, making you fly around the track. I point this out for two reasons. One, it's because I never had this kind of problem with any version of virtual racing, even while avoiding others. Sure, generally there were less cars on the track and certainly there were not in packs like in Formula Retro Racing, but still the car in virtual racing always felt stable, as if you were always in control even when avoiding others and being forced to counter steer. But secondly, and this might be the biggest issue that causes the lost instability, is the fact that you are forced to use the fucking analog stick to drive. At least on the Nintendo Switch, since this is all footage I've recorded on my sweet Nintendo Switch. You see, just because the analog stick exists, that does not mean you should force it on everybody. Not everybody likes to drive around with it, some simply prefer to use the d-pad instead, like me. Of course, unless I am using a wheel, but since I don't have one compatible with the switch, I want to use the d-pad. So let me use the goddamn d-pad. You would think that developers today would give you the option to use one or the other whenever you want. Like if you want to drive with the analog stick, that's fine, and it's also ok if that is the default setting. I'm fine with it. But don't take our option away to change and use the d-pad if we want. This is something that really pisses me off to no end. Not only in this game, but generally in racing games that force the stick on you. As a developer, you should never take options away from players, period. But because Formula Retro Racing is an old school arcade racer, the analog stick is not really suited for it, which makes the lack of a D-pad option worse. The issue is that games like these require you to do sudden and quick taps on the D-pad, which allows for precise control. And this is coming from me, however, even far better drivers than me will tell you that the d-pad is the better option for precise control. Unless you are using a wheel, of course. But for the sake of argument, let's say that the analog stick is as good as the d-pad to play this game. Still, why the fuck would you, as a developer, take players the option away to choose either or. That's shit. Simply put, if you prefer the analog stick even in a game like this, that's fine. More power to you, even regarding every racing slash driving game. But don't ever take other players the option away to choose what they prefer. Back then, in the 80s and 90s, there were no such options, so the d-pad was the only way to go. Remember when you couldn't jiggle the stick on early PlayStation controllers? But today, there is no excuse. However, the issue goes even beyond this, because you can't even configure anything in your damn controller. 
And yes, as always I am using the Switch Pro Controller. Notice how you can choose a car, you can choose a track. After that, the game shows you the button configuration, which is fine. That happens before the game actually loads to the race. This not only is default, but the developer says, you are gonna drive how I like to drive, so fuck you player. You wanna look back? Yeah, good luck, because you have to press R for it, while you need to press ZR to accelerate. Yeah, why? Why does the developer expect you to lose speed just to look back? Or do you use the middle finger to accelerate, but seriously, how many players do that? Usually players use the index finger to accelerate. It's idiotic that to look back, you have to press R. You know what would help in this case? To give multiple configuration options! Ok, rent over. Even taking the controls out of it, the rest of the game also is a hit here, but a miss there. But granted, it's more hit than miss, because it ultimately... The game does a lot right. It feels and looks like virtual racing. But there are certain things that make this game fall off a bridge. The tracks are mostly fine and you have 8 of them. The last 3 are unlockable though. And while most of them are fine, the last one can literally go suck a dick. Mostly because of this part that constantly slows you down and you will get destroyed because you are always hitting other drivers or hitting the fucking wall. Fuck this track with a big stick in its ass. But again, the rest of the tracks are fine though. And you will drive all of them in all three difficulty levels, easy, normal and hard. At least if you wanna unlock everything of course. But no matter the difficulty, the real difficulty aren't even the opponents themselves. Because no matter the difficulty, they seem only slightly faster than before, but nothing too challenging by itself. The real challenge comes in two forms. Form 1 is the time limit. Yes, you have a clock and you should not allow it to reach zero. Ok, technically you can, because even when it reaches zero, it still does not mean 0.0. .0. After all, you still have a few milliseconds before it actually reaches 0.0. .0. On easy and normal, it's quite manageable, even if you hit the wall or other cars, but on hard you better drive perfectly, because you will barely even have enough time to reach the next checkpoint to get more time. But I quite like it, because it adds to the challenge. And yes, I also grew up with this concept. However, Form 2 is the fact that you take damage. Yes, your car actually can get destroyed if you take too much damage. Obviously, you take damage if you hit the wall or the cars or something like this happens. But talking about the damage, it's actually quite a fine addition to the game. Obviously, it adds to the challenge and that's why you are mostly forced to avoid hitting anything, which often leads you to fly around the track. And also interestingly enough, the parts you and your opponents lose during the race remain on the track, at least until a respawn happens. So if an opponent loses its tire, for example, you also should avoid those because they damage your car as well. So basically, literally avoid everything. This bar tells you how much damage you can take and if it starts glowing, Pay attention because one more hit and you go BOOM! Uh, well, technically. Because this is also the part that actually damages the game, because it mostly has to do with the hit detection, which isn't quite stellar, like the example I've showed earlier. But even beyond that, it's not quite clear how hard you can hit things. I bet the game itself doesn't even know it. 
sometimes you can hit an opponent full on and take little damage, but sometimes you barely hit the wall and take a ton of damage. Sometimes your damage meter is glowing and you hit the wall full on, but you are still fine. If you take a ton of damage, it will often result in you suddenly losing all 4 tires and having to wait until the respawn happens. In fairness, the respawn happens quite fast. So if you add the fact that the car can lose its stability fast, then have fun trying to keep your car whole, especially on this shitty track. But even just hitting the opponent sometimes this shit flies all over the screen blocking your view. Why? And don't you dare restart the race while you are in the middle of blowing up into pieces, because this will happen. Yeah, as soon as you get destroyed, the screen goes black and white, which in itself, it's fine. After all, you got destroyed and are dead at least until you respawn. But when you pause and restart during those few seconds, you will drive around in a world without color, like I did. So pay attention and if you have the habit to restart as soon as you realize that you made a big mistake, like I have the tendency to do, then just don't. Let the animation play out and wait until your car respawns to restore all color in the game. However, the black and white issue didn't happen in Monaco for example, so it's track specific? But it's not like the game is bad at all. It certainly has its issues, but it still has its positives and I've talked about a few already, but there are more like this. See how the tires react to the track? That's a really nice touch. Even the wing reacts to the turns. If you are smart and skilled, then you technically don't even need to brake at all in most tracks, because if you manage to take these parts of the tracks well, then these parts slow your car down. So no need to brake. Well ok, in Monte Carlo, Ok, let's be honest, it's Monaco, and in Mountain, the last shitty track, you actually need to brake because there are only walls, but in any other track, uh, not necessarily. And the soundtrack is quite good as well. But one thing I actually like is the presentation of the countdown before the race actually starts. This actually looks awesome, how the numbers are coming towards you. Similar goes when you finish the race. I like how the letters appear and you just drive by. Yeah, it's simple, but it looks good. But if you change to the cockpit view shortly before the countdown happens, while still on the black loading screen, then that cool presentation will be gone because it only appears in a flying start. So no, in Grand Prix mode you can't forget about that cool countdown. But speaking of cockpit view, you have three views here. First person or cockpit view, third person or further third person. In an arcade racer like this, third person feels more like the real deal, at least for me, but I couldn't resist to use the first person view at times, especially when you actually see the tires react to the track the way they do. But there is one disappointing thing about this view, you cannot look back. How am I supposed to know what's behind me then? But looking back is no problem with any other view. So let me look back with the first person view as well. One other thing that I've noticed is that when you respawn the car flashes, but only the main body. I mean, flashing like that would usually mean that you are invincible for a while, so you can re-enter the race with ease, 
that's a good thing. But in Formula Retro Racing the flashing means nothing. Your driving wheel doesn't flash, nor do your tires, nor does your wing. It's only your main body that does that. Why? As soon as you respawn then you can get hit immediately. So you are not invincible. And yes, you will take damage because of it. So the flashing around is pointless. Finally, it also has a Grand Prix mode, practice mode and elimination mode. Practice is what you expect. Just drive around to get a feel for the physics and the tracks or set new records. Grand Prix actually is what you expect as well. Uh, well, ok, not quite. You would assume that Grand Prix means that it's some kind of tournament where you drive all tracks in a given specific order, get points and the one with the most points wins. Well, while the one with the most points indeed wins, there is actually no real tournament here since you can always choose the track you want to drive on. I don't see much point in that. On the other hand though, you can prolong this kind of tournament in quotations to no end, without having to restart anything. But hey, at least you can drive against 3 other players local. Now elimination is a bit weird, so you choose a track, you choose a car and start driving. Now your goal here is to drive the max amount of laps, 30 laps, and reach a specific rank in the end. Sounds easy at first, but the opponents will be faster each lap until you reach the point where they are so fast that you cannot possibly keep up. No, no car is upgradable. Sure, you will be first by the first or second lap and drive off. But as soon as grab, let's say 10, maybe 15 hits, you will suddenly notice that the second and third place drivers are behind your ass and they are much faster than you could ever be. So it can actually be challenging to keep the opponents behind you, especially on the hard difficulty. Like I've said, it's a weird mode but kind of fun. However, you need a bit of patience for this because 30 laps are not 3 or 4 and use the slipstream anytime you can. But pay attention though because the slipstream while very helpful can sometimes slingshot you towards the rear end of the opponent in front of you. By the way, you get points from races that go from beginner to professional and possibly beyond, but I still have no idea what's it for. I am a professional now, yeah, so what? Can I buy something with it? And it disappears from the screen when it's adding points, as if the screen of your TV is too small or something? Might depend on the TV use, but why not let us players adjust the screen size to our TV. Finally, in the options, the only thing worth noting here are the scenery animations, which basically just adds flags reacting to the wind. It's nice, but you won't notice it during the race anyway. Now, let me be clear I don't hate this game at all because of its issues. But it's not like I love it either, because of its issues. I mean, the game does a lot right, compared to visual racing even. It actually surprised me how much it manages to feel like the old school awesome arcade racer virtual racing. But the issues it has right now, and the things that don't seem fully realized, hold this game back from being better than it actually is, which is a shame.